Productivity means different things to different people. Productivity to me is all about getting content created as quickly as possible. Productivity to you might be about trying to write an article more quickly or deal with your inbox more efficiently. The one thing I think we can all agree on when it comes to productivity though, is that it's all about doing the things that you need to do as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So that's what I'm gonna cover in this video, 12 tips and tricks to help you be more productive on the iPhone. Okay, let's get into it. One of my favorite productivity tips is that you can use Siri to remind you about something, complete with a link to that thing. So let's say, for example, that you're browsing the web and you find an article that you want to reference later. I can access Siri and say, remind me about this, and my voice assistant will add a link to the Safari page into my Reminders app, making it dead easy for me to get back to it. The problem with this, though, is that you can't specify a list. I use multiple lists within Reminders, including one specifically for video topics that I want to create at a later date. And it would be great if I could not only be reminded about this article, but specifically add it into that list. I use this quick workaround. So the first thing that we need to do is open the Reminders app and create our video ideas list. We do that by tapping the add list button in the bottom right corner of the screen. Give the list a name and in the list type field underneath, choose smart list tap into where it says edit filters. Tap into the tags filter and choose any selected tags. I'm then gonna create a tag using the plus button and I'm gonna call that tag video. Clearly, this is for my specific example. You use this how you like. I'll then choose done and then press done again to create the list. What I've done is created a list where any time that a reminder is created that includes the video tag, it will automatically be filed away into this list. With that done, I can now go to Safari and find an example page, activate Siri and say, remind me about this. You'll see that the reminder is created. If you then immediately tap into the reminder, which will then take you directly into the reminders list, you can then tap into it again, press the tag button in the menu bar and type video, press done. Go back a page and you'll notice that in video ideas, the reminder that we just created has been filed away in the list, just like we wanted. This isn't perfect and it would be even better if I could do all of this using just my voice, but as a way of quickly and efficiently filing away reminders whilst making use of the remind me about this feature, I think it's pretty good and I use it all the time. Oh, and just so that you know, remind me about this works perfectly in Safari. I've been able to get it to work in Chrome. It also works in Mail and a number of other apps across the iPhone. A minor feature, but something that could save you a lot of time depending on how you use the web, is the ability to automatically have Safari open articles in reader mode on certain websites. And you probably already know that you can press the AA button in the bottom left corner and then choose show reader to have that article open in reader mode. What you could do instead is on a relevant web page, tap the AA button and choose website settings. At the top of this page, there's an option that you can toggle on called use reader automatically. Toggle this, press done, and from now on, anytime that you access an article on this particular domain, it will automatically open in reader mode. You would of course have to do this for all of the websites that you'd like to use it for, but this is relatively quick to set up and could save you a lot of time in the long run as you only need to do it once per website. An update that arrived in iOS 17 was the inclusion of the Messages menu, which you can access by pressing the plus button in the lower left corner of the Messages screen. Here you can access things like your photo library, stickers, and audio messages, as well as other useful features. There is a More button at the bottom that allows you to access everything within the Messages menu, including all of your third-party apps. But did you know that you can customize this menu by tapping and holding on an app and dragging it around the menu? That includes dragging things from the second page of apps to the first page of apps and vice versa. So you can make sure that your most used features are all included on the first page within easy reach. This video is all about being more productive. So it was a no brainer when the guys at Magical AI said they'd like to sponsor a video because their tool is quite literally designed to save you time. Imagine saving 10 hours a week by automating the repetitive work that clogs up your schedule, like writing emails, updating forms, or extracting data from websites. Magical AI is a free Chrome extension that sets up in seconds and works on every site, transforming how you handle these mundane tasks. A feature that I'm really impressed with is the transfers feature. Let's say that you need to gather information from LinkedIn profiles. Maybe you're prospecting or looking for a new job or you run your own business. You can open 20 tabs of different profiles and with a few clicks, transfer all the data that you want into a spreadsheet. 
This feature alone can save you countless hours and works on any site like LinkedIn, Facebook, X, Instagram, TikTok, even work tools like Salesforce or Zendesk. You'll no longer have to copy paste and waste time on data entry. Another powerful feature is AI Reply. Whether you're responding to emails on Gmail, messages on LinkedIn or WhatsApp, Magical AI can draft personalized replies for you. Perfect for those situations where you need to send a polite thank you or a quick follow-up without spending time typing out each message manually. If you're ready to work smarter and not harder, download Magical AI today by visiting getmagical.com or clicking the link in the description below. This isn't a major productivity enhancement, but I'm including it because I'm always amazed at how few people know about this one. You know how annoying it is every time that you open an app that you want to use and you get a pop-up asking you to rate the app or worse still, whether or not you're enjoying using the app. The frustrating thing is that you have to answer one way or the other in order to use the app, which can be enough to totally bring you out of your productive flow. You can set it so that your iPhone no longer asks you to rate and review apps on the App Store. You would do this by opening settings, choosing App Store and scrolling down to the in-app ratings and reviews section. Toggle this function off and you will no longer be asked to give ratings to apps. This is a productivity feature that's been around on the iPhone for ages, but I only discovered it recently. Let's say that you're in the calendar and you're adding an appointment. You use the time button to set the beginning and end of your appointment. And you do this by scrolling through the hours and the minutes in five minute increments using the time wheels. Problem is these wheels can be really easy to overshoot the time. Plus it's generally quite a fiddly way of inputting something as straightforward as time. So what you can do instead is simply tap on the time in the calendar entry and you'll get the regular iPhone number pad allowing you to type the time out instead. This also means that you don't have to be constrained to five minute increments and you can put something in really specific should you ever need to. Another tip for the Reminders app is to get into the habit of using Reminders list templates for anything that's repeatable. So for example, maybe you go away on a weekend trip a few times each year and each time, chances are the list of things that you need to remember to pack is pretty similar. Rather than creating that packing list from scratch each time, create the list once, tweak it until you're completely happy with it and then save it as a template that you can use over and over again. The way that you would do that is in the Reminders app, you would choose the Add List button at the bottom and you would create a list like you normally would. For the sake of speeding this process up, I've jumped from creating the list to having my packing list already created. Once that's done, you can tap the Ellipsis button in the upper right corner of the screen and choose Save as Template. Give the template a name and then press the Save button in the upper right of the screen. Now, the next time that you're going somewhere and you want to quickly call up that template list, you would choose Add List and choose templates at the top of the screen. All of your templates are included in here and you would simply tap on the list that you wanna use as your template. You can leave the name as it is, or you could give this list a name specific to the trip that you're about to take if you wanna avoid things getting confusing. Press create when you're happy and you can see that the list has been added to your reminders app without you having to lift a finger. I use this for the example that I've just given you of creating a quick packing list, but I also use this for things like creating my YouTube videos where the process from start to finish is basically the same every time. Play around with this, see how you can make it work for you. By the way, if you prefer to have content like this in a written format, there's a PDF version of this video complete with screenshots and you can access it along with all other PDFs I've created plus future ones for just $5 a month. You can either scan the QR code that you can see on screen or follow the link in the description of this video to learn more. There are a couple of useful functions in the mail app that are worth mentioning. We already talked about using Siri to remind you about something earlier on in the video, and that does include email where it will create a reminder in the reminders app with a link through to that particular email. But the mail app on the iPhone does have a reminder feature built into it. With an email showing in your inbox, you would swipe from left to right and tap the remind me button. You can choose the time that you'd like the mail app to remind you about that particular email. The way that it does this and the way that it differs from adding something to the reminders app is that it bumps it up to the top of your email list at the time that you specified. So this is really more useful for people that spend a lot of their working day in their inbox. But if you're someone who would find this useful, that's how you would do it. Another feature that can be quite useful in the mail app is allowing you to delay the sending of an email. So let's say, for example, someone has just sent you an email and you want to write the reply to them immediately, but for whatever reason, you don't want that email to land in their inbox until later on in the day. 
You would hit reply, type out your email reply as usual, and instead of pressing the send button, press and hold on it for just a moment. You'll see that you get multiple options, including sending the reply at the very top, two contextual options, which will usually be sending at times later on in the day, or perhaps early the next day, and a send later button down at the bottom. Here you can choose a specific date and time that you would like your reply to send. The only thing that you do need to be aware of about this feature is that in order for this to work, your iPhone does have to be connected to the internet at the time that you would like this to send. So for example, if you were using this just as you were about to get on a particularly long flight without any access to data, this wouldn't work. There's nothing more frustrating than either going to log into a website and realizing that you don't have the access details and having to wait for someone else to send you them or being the person who has the access details and forever having to send them across to friends and family. A much easier and also much more secure way of dealing with this is to make use of shared password groups using iCloud Keychain. The way that you would do this is you would go into settings and then choose passwords. Tap the plus button at the top of the screen and choose new shared group. You can call the group whatever you like. I guess the most common things here are going to be groups of family members and friends, maybe colleagues and small businesses, but you choose whatever's right for you and give the group a name. You'll be added as the owner of the group and you can then tap on add people to add additional people to the group. Once you've completed the necessary details, you can press the create button and you would then scroll through your list of passwords, selecting any passwords that you'd like to move to this group. Note that when you move a password into a shared group, it doesn't impact your ability to use it in any way. It just means that it's stored in a place where everyone who is a member of that password group can access it when they visit the relevant website. You'll be prompted to notify the people that you've added to the group via messages if you want to, although you don't have to do this. Once you've done that, your list is created. The great thing about this is that if the login credentials for a website change at any point in the future, either by you or by somebody else in the group, the password will automatically update for everyone. You can also come back to this page to edit the password group, which would include editing or removing specific login details from the group, adding new members or removing existing ones. There are a few productivity gestures that you should definitely take the time to learn on your iPhone. The first is drag and drop, which allows you to drag something from one part of your iPhone to another. So an example of where you might want to use this is let's say that you've received an email and you'd like to receive a reminder about that email later on, but you don't want to use your voice assistant to create it. You could tap and hold on the email for just a second, then move your finger around the screen to lift the email from the screen. Keep that finger pressed down, swipe up, go to the Reminders app. Tap into the list where you'd like to drop the reminder and so long as you see the green plus, you can let go to drop the reminder into that list. The reminder will be created along with a link to that email. So this is the process of drag and drop on the iPhone and once you know how to do it in one part of the iPhone, you can use it pretty much anywhere. With that covered, let me show you some other examples of how you might use this. You can use this to drag a photo into an email. So for example, here I am in the Photos app Let's say that I want to send this particular picture to an email that I've already started writing. I can follow the exact same process as I just did to drag the photo from the Photos app and drop it into my email. Same thing, but this time I've got a file in the Files app. Also, did you know that if you haven't started writing your email, but you know that you want to add something to an email, you could use drag and drop to drag the item from an app, in this case the Files app, onto the mail icon on your home screen. This will not only open the mail app, it will open a brand new email with your file already attached to the email. You just have to fill in the blanks and send it. You can even use drag and drop to drag images straight from the images part of a Google search in Safari right into the Photos app. But here's another productivity gesture to make you aware of, and that's creating stacks. So I'd begin the process of dragging an item just like we did before, but instead of swiping away from Safari to go to the Photos app, what I can do is tap on some of the other images in this search result, and you'll see that the phone adds them to the first image, creating a stack. You can then drag and drop that stack just like you did previously. Again, this works in loads of different parts of the iPhone, so give it a try. A long-standing feature of the iPhone is the ability to use two fingers to swipe down a list of items and select them all in one go. You don't have to press the edit button first for this to work. You literally just use your two fingers and swipe down a list of photos or emails or files and your phone will select all of them at once. 
Also, on the subject of using two fingers to do something, you may be aware that if you tap on a link in Safari, your iPhone will open that link in the existing tab, meaning you lose whatever it was that you were previously looking at. You could, of course, press and hold on the link and then choose open in new tab, but much quicker is to use two fingers to tap the link instead. Your iPhone will open that link in a new tab. You can then swipe from left to right at the bottom of Safari to move between your existing tabs, so you can quickly get back to what it was that you were looking at but also have the second tab available for when you want to return to it. Take the time to check out the Shortcuts app to see if an app that you use has a useful pre-designed shortcut already in there. I don't have the time in this video to show you the full process of creating shortcuts, but I have created multiple videos about shortcuts and I'll link to them in the description of this video. But essentially what a shortcut does is it allows you to quickly perform an action using an app on your iPhone at the touch of a button. So you'd open the Shortcuts app, press the plus button in the upper right to create a new shortcut, tap into the search bar at the bottom of the screen, and then choose Apps. Scroll through this list and have a look at all the different things that you can do. All of the apps showing in here are apps that you have on your phone that have some kind of pre-built shortcut available. For example, on the Aura app, I can automatically send a photo to the Aura frame that I most frequently use. Or in the Craft app, I can add something to a craft document at the touch of a button. In the ChatGPT app, I can begin a conversation with ChatGPT. You can see that there are loads of different ones to choose from. Clearly the options on my phone are gonna be very different to the options on yours, but have a look and see if any of these are of use to you. The great thing about shortcuts is that once you've created them, you can add those shortcuts as a tile to your home screen, or if you've got an iPhone 15 Pro like I have, you can even add it to the action button on the left-hand side. You would do this by opening settings, choosing action button, choosing shortcut, and then selecting the specific shortcut that you want. So for example, an app that I use all the time is called The Oasis, and it's an app that allows me to record voice messages and have them automatically transcribed using AI. I've added that to the action button, so all I need to do if I ever want to access this app is tap and hold that button for a second, and it will not only open the app, it will automatically begin a recording for me. A pretty minor tip, but one that could save you a lot of time in the long run is getting into the habit of trying long press everywhere on your iPhone. What I mean by that is tapping and holding on something for a second to see if you get additional options. For example, if I tap and hold on the mail icon, you can see that I can not only access my all inboxes like I would by default, but I can also access specific inboxes, open a new message or begin a search. If I perform the same thing on Safari, I can show my reading list, show my bookmarks or create a private tab. If I do the same thing on notes, I can not only begin a new note, I can also begin a new checklist or even scan a document without having to open the app and follow the individual steps. This works all over the iPhone. And like I said, individually, you're not going to save a huge amount of time with this, but with that time compounded, this is definitely a useful tip to know. This is an oldie but a goodie and a useful tip if you're someone that uses the calculator quite often on your iPhone. If you make a mistake while you're working on the iPhone, many people believe that the only way that you can deal with it is to press the cancel button and start from scratch, but that isn't the case. If you're typing in a number and you make a mistake, for example, just swipe on the number to remove the last digit that you input. You can then correct your mistake before you continue. So there you go, 12 tips and tricks to help you be more productive with your iPhone. What do you think? Anything in here that you might start using or any tips that you think I should have included but didn't? Drop me a comment and let me know. And as ever, if you found this video useful, do please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. See you on the next video.